some of the challenges relate, I think, to the fact that we've had a very top-heavy, crisis-led sort of system of mental health services that's really been not as comprehensive in terms of meeting people with mental health issues or challenges or difficulties or emotional distress right across the spectrum. So I mean in terms of early common mental health challenges, emotional distress all the way to the spectrum of crisis and actually the resource, the limited resource that's been there has been invested in crisis quite rightly um, if there's been limited resources but we need to spread that resource much 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 wider so that it really reflects um, people's real mental health and well-being. Um, I think the other sort of challenge that we, we face is that in order for it to get to a standard which is really reflective of being in the 21st century in terms of mental health understanding and services that respond to that, it needs ongoing and further investment. Um, it needs to be really robustly dealing with um, an intergenerational approach, so it's like from the cradle to the grave. It need, needs to be much more understanding of being sophisticated around people's differences and people's differential experiences that lead them into a uh, mental health crisis in particular. So the issues around multiple discriminations and multiple uh, disadvantage and what that sort of means when one comes into the uh, space of mental health crisis means that some of our uh, responses that are a bit uh, one size fits all doesn't necessarily help to deal with some of those uh, difficulties. Um, I think the competencies and the cult the competencies of the workforce is something that needs to be ongoing but also the health and welfare of the workforce is also something that needs to be ongoing. Um, uh, I also imagine a place where we've got ongoing engagement, not even engagement, where actually the populations that we serve are much more closely involved with the design and the delivery of mental health services and this is something that is just standard, that's just the way that we do things, the way that we do things here. Yeah. Operating as a, a local government councillor means for me that collaboration and partnership is absolutely critical in ensuring that the intentions of the five year forward view for mental health and the long -term ambitions of the long term plan actually manifest. And that means, in my view, that um, working outside of the NHS, traditional NHS structures with other um, agencies um, across uh, social enterprise, voluntary sector, uh, people who live in, the, in communities, uh, local government in particular, um, and all the reach that that has um, means that some of the issues that people face in terms of multiple disadvantage and multiple discrimination, for example, get attended to because we're having this kind of cross-cutting dialogue where each player of the sort of map is contributing to the improvements in each other's areas. So it's a collective approach. Um, that we need to take and, I, and, and, and it's the only way that effective delivery of the long-term um, plan amb ambitions would, would be able to happen. There's no other way. There's no more time for silo anymore and it's actually exciting times because of that. So it means that we have a less group think kind of conversations. We have groups, we have more disruptive thinking and thinking which is uh, collective and inclusive leading to collective and inclusive improved outcomes. What really inspired me today was the level of focus and engagement from the audience. So it made it a real pleasure being in the midst of what felt a really live, engaged, together kind of experience with all the contributions that the panel were making. And it was a real pleasure to be chairing such a, an important event.